Hey guys, it's Navjo Singh Jadeja again here and welcome to the new lecture. Today we're going to talk on introduction to structure. This uh, lecture is part of C programming lecture series. So let's begin. So we have seen what are variables, so basically a quick revision. Variables are symbolic representations of the value which we use in the program. And uh, we have the variables to store the values in the program like this the student we have the roll number we are in we have the integer roll number percentage float percentage the data types in c are supported in four fundamental ways that is also we have seen integer float double and character and from that we can actually come up with uh, you know a lot of other uh, ways of storing also but as you know that integer only allows the storing of integer values the real numbers are stored in the float, the double precision floating points are stored in double and we have the character for storing the characters. So this is the revision of what variables we have in here. But can this actually store uh, more information? The answer is no. Ordinary variable can store only one piece of information which is either integer, float, double or character. Now, if we want to store roll number of 50 students, we have an array. So, solution is there like this. The example we have seen in the earlier lectures of the array. That we have the roll number which is the name of the array and the size and the type of value which we are storing in here which is integer type. And if you remember in the array lecture, I have told you that array can store similar data type only. So, but then again, there is a problem that it can only store similar data type as I said. So, what do we do if in case we want the name, roll number, percentage grade for each student because that's how the real world problems are. That's how the real world objects are and we want to, you know, have a one variable storing the name, roll number, percentage grade or even any other data for that particular student. So what do we do? But then again, that's not only the case. We want multiple students data in the same way. So those who are referring this video as a part of a learning and our university students, imagine I want to store, uh, you know, all the marks and the percentage and the grades and the enrollment number of each student which are there in the class. So basically in an engineering class, uh, I would need about 60 students data. So how do we do it? Because this is all different data type. So what we need to do is we need to combine all this and we need to solve it in a way, a way of data representation. So can I say this that student A, B, C, D can be an array and this can be stored in a form of some way. This is the way real world data is stored, right? As you can see here that this looks more of an Excel sheet. This is how the data is stored. So in order to do that, we have to define a new data type. And that new data type is known as structure. So structure is actually a way of defining a data type where we can store multiple types of data for each variable. Right? Uh, yeah, as I said, the structure. So what is a structure? Structure is user-defined data type which allows you to combine and store different kinds of data. If you remember earlier lecture when we discussed data types, I gave you an idea there is there is inbuilt data types or the fundamental data types or the primary data types which are integer, character, float and double. And there was one uh, discussion we had on user defined data type. So structure is one form of user defined, defined data type which the C supports and how does it work or a declaring a structure so we have the struct which is a keyword then we have the structure name then we have the you know curly braces just like opening and closing of a function inside that we have the elements elements are the one which we actually want to store in form of a you know different data like we saw in the earlier example the roll number, the grades, the class, etc. And then we finish it up with a curly brace which is ending and a semicolon. So remember guys, this is a syntax. So you cannot alter it. You have to follow this. So we have a struct keyword 
then a space then the name of the you know uh, the structure let's say we are creating a student and inside the curly braces will be defining the different names in terms of the elements so let us see a uh, you know detail of the same example which we have seen the student we need the name roll number percentage and grade so the struct will be or the structure will be student and inside the curly braces because the name is nothing but a character array so i will declare character array of size 20 roll number is the integer roll number percentage in terms of float and grade in terms of character because i am grading uh, the student in terms of a b c d and f and then we finish this so this is how a structure is declared in the c program and this is used to store multiple types of data as you can see we have character integer and float and also a character within the same uh, you know variable so there is one student's data and four different elements of it right so and remember this semicolon is the indication that the variable ends here please make sure you are doing this while writing a program otherwise will result into an logical error so you know if we have multiple students we can actually call the structure by struct student s1 or you know maybe adding up the values like that so individually for s1 this fields will be stored and we will be having the values assigned to it and collectively as in the memory it will be referred as s1 as we saw in the array as we saw in the pointers that there is a common uh, location of that space for the structure so if we have multiple students we can actually individually enter the values calling each element also so s1 dot roll number can be assigned uh, compile time like this or we can enter the values using the other functionalities also for character we would require strcpi or we can take it runtime as well all right so this is the way we will be accessing the structure elements and also uh, providing the values to the elements compile chain and this is how it will be stored in the memory so as you can see it is the representation of one element with uh, sorry one variable with four elements all right so same way we can also use this functions as i said earlier also instead of uh, taking it uh, you know compile time you can enter this runtime also using the syntax which is appropriate to that so this you will learn better if you are actually you know pausing the video trying to construct a you know small structure program and practicing it then it will be uh, easier for you to understand and another way of doing it is also when you enter the value and print it all right so let us see an example uh, for book uh, so that you can understand what we are going to do with structure so the concepts are clear for all of you so we have a book name here the author of the book here the price and addition so how do we write an uh, you know structure so similar to the you know the example which we have and those who are practicing can actually pause the video we have given a struct student example in here can you actually try by yourself all right so what we have to do similar is we have to come up with character name character author float price and integer addition because integer uh, addition is something which is first second third so it can be taken into the form of a numerical so this is how you will call up a struct let us see a complete program this is the struct book which i have done here so we'll need a void main and we'll be entering the value run time or we can do it the compile time as well so as you can see we are first of all creating an element for struct book which is b1 in the void main and for that particular first instance which is the b1 instance we are giving the values compile time so learn c rohit 1001 are the values which have entered and ultimately it is something which is printing the 
values when I run this. All right. So this can be individually seen on the output screen. So this is how it works. Uh, this is uh, you know basic concept of the structure. You can always uh, try out different programs related to it. I think this is the introduction part of the structure. We'll see furthermore what we can do with the structure. So if you have any doubts, you can always comment below. Otherwise, uh, practice more and more for the coding to improve. Thank you so much. Have a good day.